Okay, this is uh, for the McGraw-Hill textbook. This is chapter one, section one, which deals with ones, which deals with uh, one variable equations. First thing you need to understand is that you need to understand the four types of one-step equations. Here you have x plus four equals five. We subtract four from both sides. And remember the golden rule in algebra is what you do to one side, you gotta do to the other side. So if we subtract four here, I'm gonna subtract four here and we get x equals one. Remember we're doing the opposite of what the number is doing to the variable. Same thing here. We have x minus three equals seven. So we're gonna add three to both sides. We get x equals 10. Here three is multiplying times x. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we're going to divide both sides by 3. We get x equals 2. Here we're going to divide by, we're dividing 4 into x. So we're going to multiply by 4 on both sides. We get x equals 8. Now, all multi-step problems come down to a combination of these, one of these two with one of these two, which is called two-step. So really what you want to do is you want to take multi-step equations down to two-step, and then two-step to one-step, and then your answer. Here's an example of two-step. This is example three on page 47. We have 3x plus 1 equals negative 7. See, if I block off this 3, you can see that I have x plus 1, which is one step. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I get 3x equals negative 8. If I were to block off this 1, See, I have 3x minus 7 equals minus negative 7, which is the same thing we have on here. That's the reason it's called two-step, because we have this step where we're subtracting 1, this step where we're dividing by 3, we get our answer of negative 8 thirds. Uh, once you understand the process of solving multi-step equations, the biggest mistakes you're going to make are arithmetic. Like in terms of here, you're going to forget to carry the negative, which makes this a negative eight-thirds answer. We come over here to example four, and this is our first of a multi-step problem. And so what we have here is we're not in two-step form, because in order to be in two-step form, it should be the variable on the left, added or subtracted to some number, equals to another number, not a variable. So the first thing we've got to do is get rid of these parentheses. So we're going to distribute the 5 to the z and the minus 2. 5 times z is 5z. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So now we have 11z plus 2 equals 5z minus 10. We're going to get in two-step form. So what we're going to do is subtract the variable number on the right over to the left. Now if this had been negative, we would have had to add it over. So when we go 11z minus 5z, we get 6z plus 2 equals negative 10. Now I've underlined this so you can recognize two-step form. A two-step form, subtract the 2, divide by the 6, we get negative 2. So when I subtract the 2, negative 10 minus 2 is negative 12, divide by 6, negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. Here's another example of multi-step problems, a little more into it. Now, so what's going to happen here is we can't do the parentheses until we do the brackets. So I'm going to distribute this negative 4 here, so I get negative 4y, and I'm only going to have to distribute the negative 4 here to the negative to the minus 3, because once I distribute this 12 to the parentheses, the negative 4 and the negative 3 will both be in that number. I'm going to distribute the 2 to the 6 minus 5y, get 12 minus 10y. Now I'm going to distribute the 12 here. So now I have negative 4y plus 12y minus 60 equals 12 minus 10y. Combine like terms here. So negative 4y and 12y is 8y minus 60 equals 12 minus 10y. Notice this right here is the same that we had right up here. We have a variable number on both sides, so we're going to add this 10y over here. Now we get 18y minus 60 equals 12, two-step form. Add the 60, get 72, divide by 18, get y equals 4. Come over here to example 8, page 50. It's a little different. It's got fractions. We don't ever have to use fractions when we solve. 
we can multiply through by the least common multiple and get rid of those fractions and then it becomes a multi-step problem like we want to solve like for instance in this problem we have a denominator of 5 2 1 here you can see I changed this 2 to 2 over 1 because I wanted to make everything a fraction and 10 so the smallest number that 5, 2, 1, and 10 will go into is 10. So I'm going to multiply each one of these terms by 10 over 1. When I multiply this by 10 over 1, 5 divides into 10 gives me 2, so it gives me 2 times x minus 2. When I multiply 10 over 1 over here, the 2 divides into 10 and it gives me 5, so it's minus 5 times x minus 4. When I multiply here, it's just 10 times 2, which is 20. When I multiply here, the tens cancel out, so it's just x plus 4. Distribute, I get 2x minus 4, negative 5x plus 20. Combine like terms here, 4 and 20 is 24 plus x. Combine like terms here, and I get negative 3x plus 16 equals 24 plus x. Notice that this line here is the same that we had here. And here. So it's a common practice that that's where you're going to end up in most of these problems. So what we're going to do is subtract this x over. We get negative 4x plus 16 equals 24. Two-step form. Subtract the 16 from 24, get 8. Divide by the negative 4, get x equals negative 2. I hope you can see in these three problems, example 4, example 6, and example 8, that even though they're multi-step, the once you take care of the brackets, parentheses, and collecting like terms, you end up in a form of two steps. Here's dealing with decimals. Now, the rule on decimals is this. Don't work with decimals. You can multiply through just like we did with fractions to make them whole numbers. The rule on multiplying through is I'm going to multiply by 10 for the largest amount of decimal places that I have in a single term. See here I have two decimal places in this term, one decimal place in this term, two in this. So the largest amount of decimal places I have in a single term is two. So 10 times 10 is 100. So I'm going to multiply through here by 100. 100 times this 0.55x is 55x. 100 times this 0.6 is 60. 100 times this 2.05x is 205x. Now, I'm going to do it a little different than the book did. I'm going to take it to two-step form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this 205x from the 55x and get negative 150x minus 60 equals 0. See how I'm still in two-step form? Add 60, divide by negative 150, reduce the fraction, I get two-fifths. And make sure you understand, you'll never see directions that say reduce fractions. It's understood that you reduce fractions. If you do not reduce fraction for me, I will mark the whole problem wrong. And you must show work for me. If you do not show work, I will mark the problem wrong.